All right, we're back. We're on page 182. Um, we're talking about parametric equations. Pretty much my favorite thing in uh, maybe all of math, to be honest, because you can just do so much with them. Uh, and what we're going to talk about now is how you can make your own parametric equations, right? So, so far, I've pretty much been giving you either the component functions or the graphs of the component functions and asking for the plane curve, which is like uh, one one millionth the amount of fun that you can have with these things. So, let's start thinking about how we can create our own. So, uh, at their very most basic, all we're gonna do is take things that we already know, so plain old, plain curves, um, and, and rewrite them so that they, they kind of like add a little bit of excitement, right? So they pretty much add the element of time or more specifically, uh, the notion of movement along a curve. And that's where like the fun comes in. So what we're gonna do in this particular thing is we're gonna focus in on the curve y equals x squared, right? So we all know what y equals x squared looks like, hopefully, uh, so just by itself y equals x squared. Go be a line. All right, so this is just gonna be y equals x squared, just normal, right? Like uh, algebra one or two or wherever you first meet it. So y equals x squared, it's like this, goes like this, goes like this. Might be the most famous curve. Um, so that's y equals x squared. What we're gonna do so we're gonna write parametrics for it. The process of writing parametrics or turning a curve into a set of parametrics is called parameterizing a curve, parameterizing. Uh, some spell checks do not like that word. It doesn't really matter, it's a word, it's a math word for sure, math verb, I guess. Uh, so we're gonna parameterize uh, this curve. So the way we're gonna do it in this case, I'm gonna tell you what to use. So it's still less fun than you just doing your own thing. By the way, the single most obvious parameterization that you could ever use, and it's the one that you use most of the time, and I did not use it on this page because that's weird, uh, is to just let, so the most common by like miles is to just let x equal t, just let the independent variable be t. And if you let x equal t, you're gonna get x equals t, and y equals t squared. And t could obviously be an element of the reals. And as t increases, x increases, which means you're gonna go from left to right on the curve. So if I were to sketch this, this is where you get in trouble. Uh, if I'm gonna sketch this, first of all, terrible sketch. What happens is you don't put, so in my original, Right In my original, I had an arrow here and an arrow here. Now I need an orientation. As t increases, so does x. So you're going like this. You're at this point when t equals zero. Then like if this is one, one, you're at this point when t equals one. If this is two, four, you're at this point when t equals two, and so on. That's the simplest parameterization for basically anything. Right, if you have a function y equals f of x, just let x equal t. Now you have y equals f of t, parametrics are t comma f of t, you're good to go. Um, that's the most basic thing. But like, who wants to be basic? So instead, let's let x equal t plus three. Like, wh why are we doing that? Well, if x is t plus three, and then y is always gonna be x squared in this example. It doesn't need to be, it could be anything, it could be e to the x, it could be whatever. In this example, it's x squared. If that's the case, then y is gonna be the quantity t plus three, it's whatever x is, and then square it. So what's happening here? So t, now here's an interesting interaction. So the domain and range. X is typically associated with domain, right? So this domain, how am I gonna write this? To get the domain, of this, it's the ring domain of plane curve is range of x of t, right? So in this particular case, since the range of x equals t plus three, picture x is the picture, y picture, draw it. Right, so three, this is x, this is t. 
uh, kind of looks like this, right? The range of that graph is all reals, which means X can be any real number. So this will be X is an element of the reals. We've actually kind of seen this, so I'm gonna go back to uh, the previous notes. Here, for example, so it's, this is not a function, but we can still talk about the domain and the range of the graph, I suppose. So here, x is three minus four sine. The range of this is from negative one to seven, which meant that the plane curve is stuck between negative one and seven. I think that ellipses and circles are the like best way to think about like to connect information to parametric equations because they're like pretty well behaved and it's not that bad. So here, like the range of this plane curve should be like, what can y do? Well, look at the equation for y. y is one plus three cosine. One, and you go up three, you go down three. So from negative two to four. And that's what the range of this plane curve is. So let's go back to here. So what can, uh, what can this do? So for the range, we get that the range of the plane curve is the range of uh, y of t, right? And so this one, it's often easier to just think about the original function, like y equals x squared. You know that uh, the range of that is uh, y is greater than or equal to zero. It's not gonna change here. That's, that's often the easiest way to do that. Um, so I'm gonna say y is greater than or equal to zero. So what does our sketch look like? Our sketch looks like, eh, it almost looks identical to the one that we did for um, x equals t. Uh, why would you, for x equals t? But it's a little bit different because if they were in a race, oh my God, why? if they were in a race, why am I trying to do this in one shot? Ugh. Nope, nope, can't put the arrow at the end. Can't draw anything. Uh, okay, so if, I mean, this is just y equals x squared, but when t equals zero, so when t equals zero, x equals three. So if this is like three and then nine, this is where you are when t equals zero. So if this was a race between these two, this one is gonna win by miles because it's got a head start. It's just starting three ahead, uh, at least in the X direction, a lot more in the Y direction. So what's happening is we're still going this way, but it's like we got a jump start, um, which is really interesting. So actually, I think I'm gonna just stop this video here and I'll come back in the next one and do like the rest of these because this, it's got a lot of the information out of the way. So what I'll be able to do on the next ones is just like go for it, you know, like do the substitutions, parameterize this thing, see what the graph looks like. Then we're gonna go to GeoGebra, um, make all of them happen, I think, um, and see how they relate to each other. So I'm gonna stop this here.